Hey guys, Tony Rowe here. Back with another Lee Chess Rapid game against Ibrahimo or Ibramo. Hard to say. Ah, oh, I moved too fast. I lost the good luck, have fun messages, and I'm too lazy to type that. Okay, as is usual on this channel by now, I'm going to wait until Black declares whether or not he's playing a Stonewall. He's certainly not playing a Stonewall before going D4. Uh huh. Okay. He can play d4 if he wants. I'm okay with that. We get a reverse modern Benoni of some kind. I'll play that. Does not. Um, okay, I guess there's a pretty good chance we're going to get a charge defense here. Yeah. A not infrequent guest on my channel. We'll see how this goes. Usually, I think that black does not take on d4 so so early and I'm not super educated on this line I know I looked at this a while ago and thought that after castles and bishop e3 here that that white was doing well with this knight takes c6 b takes c6 and then knight a4 blockading plan so I think I'm gonna just quickly trot these moves out and, and try and save some time and I'm going to hope that that's the, the correct way to play here. So I, I think like a, a normal move here would be maybe rook e8 or possibly bishop g4. Knight g4. I'm not certain that that's a good idea. I wonder if I can take that thing. Or if just bishop f4 and and it's hanging at the end, that's also possible. So if knight d5, knight e3, what am I doing there? I want to play knight e3, but I can't because this thing is hanging. So knight e3, do I have to go f takes e3? If I did, I would not be all that excited about grabbing that pawn. I might want to leave it. There's knight takes d5, knight e3. I can try and flick in knight c6 there. So knight takes knight takes d5, knight takes e3, knight c6. Knight d1, knight d8. Oi. <laughs> it's, it's not easy to, to figure out what's going on there. So if knight d5, knight e3, knight c6. Shout out to No Joke, by the way. He has a good stream. I think he streams on Twitch. Well worth checking out. Knight d5. I don't think this move is good because I when I studied this this particular bishop e3 idea, I don't remember this being a move. So it makes me think that knight takes d5 works. I'm just trying to figure out why that's the case. Ah, well, here here's one idea. It's knight takes d5, knight takes e3, knight takes c6. If knight takes d1, I can actually play knight d takes e7 check. And I'm still hitting his queen, but I, I bag this bishop first. And queen takes e7, knight takes e7 check is obviously nothing. And if king h8, then knight takes d8. And he's he's going to be down a piece after a later rook takes d1. And if he has to play b takes c6, then I can play knight back to e3. Knight takes e3 back. And in that case, I would just be up a pawn with a better structure. So I think this move is, is quite good, actually. Which is not surprising. I don't think knight g4 is a very good move. 
But the key move that you have to see is knight takes c6 after knight takes e3. Just offloading this knight from the d4 square before playing knight takes e3. Remember, knight takes e3 and d4 was hanging. So it's just a nice little intermezzo for for taking on e3 with a knight and, and preserving white's otherwise pristine pawn structure. <laughs> So I think black's already in, in some trouble here. Again, because of the threat of knight, knight d takes e7, it's, it seems like this move is forced, and then after knight takes e3, black has the two bishops, which is really the only thing he's got going for him. Worst pawn structure and down a pawn, so... I need to start thinking about Suppressing counterplay, maximizing my my advantage here. Probably want to eliminate the two bishops. We'll see how Ibrahimo decides to to handle this. It, it, it will be interesting to look at alternatives here, though. I mean, I also think bishop f4 is probably quite good. Because, again, I'm just meeting the threat, and then d4 is... Um, d5, rather, is, is under attack once again. Maybe maybe after bishop f4, bishop f6 is good. Hitting the knight, and if, if knight takes c6, b takes c6, then d5 is no longer weak. Yeah, that might be kind of annoying. He's thinking. So am I. I'm trying to think about what black's best move might be after this. I'd be attacking c6. I'd also be threatened to exchange queens. That makes me think that something like queen b6 might be best. But I think in that position, I, I might be happy to just go queen b3 and threaten the, the trade of queens and then taking on c6 again. And if he takes, uh, I would have these double b pawns, but there would be pretty overwhelming pressure on his queen side. Whoa, that hangs a queen. <laughs> think long, think wrong, man. <laughs> uh, this, this doesn't make for a great upload. <laughs> I mean... The the move thirteen queen hang is not is not going to lead to the most instru <laughs> instructional chess video, but I guess I guess I'll upload it anyway. Maybe we can try and extend this video by taking a look at the the theory here. <laughs> that is unfortunate. Oh man. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on what Black plays against against one d four or against the flank op flank openings and usually but it doesn't feel to me like e6 is a really sort of optimal opening move i think that that against 2g3 specifically black can be a little bit more flexible i mean if you play the slav i would play c6 or probably better yet knight c6 yeah, I mean, and even if you play the queen's gambit declined or or whatever, once white is committed to g3, you're not really going to transpose to those systems anyway. And so, blocking in the light squared bishop with with e6 just feels kind of suboptimal to me. But if you play the tarish, then this is fine, and my opponent might might do that. So, not nothing really wrong with that. Oh, let's let's pop this into a study here before I forget before I add a bunch of analysis that I that I have to redo. Uh -huh. Again, I'm, I'm not happy about this thing at all. I like that it turns like a little bit brighter, but I love that green arrow, the green uh, button, rather. I'm not going to forgive you for that, Tebow. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, again, much more common against these strategies. Th this 2G3... Uh, it, d5 2 g3 is is some sort of light squared bishop outside of the pawn chain strategy so something like knight f6 bishop g2 and then 
usually c6 castles and then bishop f5 or bishop g4. And it, that makes sense. I mean, black is going to put all of his pawns on light squares pretty much, so why not put the bishop on one of these squares first? But okay, e6 is not a bad move. And some people, when, you know, I think that's one of the, the benefits of playing uh, the Tarish defense as black is that it's one of these openings like the Dutch and like the King's Indian where it's pretty move order independent against all of the flank openings. So, of course, you might not get a Tarish defense. Like, you know, white does not necessarily have to play c4 and then and then transpose into your sort of systems with this. White could go something like d d3 and, and play for e4 instead, and you, you'd have to be ready for that, but at least you don't have to be worried about getting move ordered out of your preferred opening system. You can just play this against pretty much every flank opening and one d4 setup, and, and you're going to be okay, which I think is nice. And I think when you're coming up the ranks it, it makes some sense to to take on isolated pawns and learn about that pawn structure and and strive for active play where where you're trying to steal the initiative from your opponent so i think in that respect uh the targe defense is quite good also i think the downside is that um you know as black accepting an isolated pawn i think some of the main lines of the tarish tend to, to tend to be a little bit statically worse for black like black might have a little bit of activity but in general you know white is white and white is going to get a small advantage out of the opening in a lot of cases and you know black will equalize a little bit later on with best play but a lot of times you know if white plays really well against the Tarish, you just end up with an isolated deep on that's a little bit i think sketchy it's not to my taste but i hate isolated pawns so that's sort of more of a stylistic thing yeah, and usually black waits for white to take on c5 if if that's the case, or he'll play c takes d4 much further down the line. Like, for instance, the main line would be bishop e7, knight c3, castles, and, and then bishop g5 is, is the most popular move. And usually it's takes, takes, and then h6, bishop back to e3, and then rook e8. This is like a very well-known tabby, and you can see that white has tried a lot of different moves here. And a lot of moves make sense. Uh, I've played queen a4 the most. But um, rook c1 has become popular. Going back a little bit, instead of bishop g5, I quite like taking on taking on c5. I think this has been on my channel possibly more than once now. Bishop takes c5 and then a3. I think this is an interesting way to play. Uh, and it's, it's challenging in that you can see that white tends to score very well against moves that are not knight to e4. And for people who are maybe just picking up the Tarish defense or they're just not that that studious in the opening phase, knight e4 is not at all an obvious move because it hangs upon to knight takes d5. Black's idea is that after knight takes d5, bishop e6, knight c3, takes, takes, queen takes d1, rook takes d1. Black actually has a, a reasonable play for the pawn. Rook a to d8. It's important to use this rook. I'm not going to go into it. Um, and white has a weak weak a3 pawn and, and weak pawns overall on the queen side. This weak b3 squared, knight a5 c4, or knight a5 b3. All of these things are possible. Black has a small lead in development, so th there's some compensation there i some people think white is better here some people think uh, black is okay i tend to think that black is pretty close to being okay but that probably if white does his, does his his homework at home then you can at least press a little bit but i like this line because it sort of forces black to play knight e4 and find knight e4 you can see white scores like pretty unbelievably in all of these other lines so against bishop e6 white hasn't hasn't lost a game period h6 the same Bishop g4 the same, d4 the same. I mean, like, white scores generally very well in this line. So if you're looking for a line against the Tarish defense, this is a good one, I think. And white's idea, by the way, is to just simply go, like, b4. And after bishop a6, you can go knight a4, bishop b2, rook c1. Very natural moves. Control the d4 square. Put your knight on d4. Put your knight on c5, etc. So grab the two bishops with knight a4, takes b6, etc. So... It's a, a pretty easy line to play, I think, and it's it's theoretically eh, pretty challenging too. So, but I think that against an early, very early C takes D four, you kind of enable White to 
enact sort of an optimal setup with with knight takes c6 and the standard blockading plan, like rook e8, rook c1, and let's just say like bishop g4 is very natural. Let's just follow the database and see what it says. Bishop e6, and now I would guess knight takes c6 is pretty reasonable. Though there are a lot of moves here. I, like, I would be very tempted to just play this. This is a very typical plan for for white. Um, just simply planning to exchange dark square bishops. Because these pawns, these central pawns are on light squares. And uh, this dark squared bishop, th these squares tend to be kind of weak. So trading dark squared bishops is quite advantageous for white. And of course, when, when your opponent has, has the worst structure, trading pieces and, and reducing... His dynamism is also, I think, just advisable. Yeah, interesting. If h6, I'm guessing this is kind of similar. Yeah, this scores quite well. Stockfish seems relatively unimpressed, but I, I, I would prefer white. Okay, so that, that's the general sort of idea here. And I think probably knight g4 is just a tactical tactical mistake. I'd be a little bit less certain about something like this. Knight d to b5. That's a weird one, but it does look pretty good. Of course, the, these squares are a little bit weak. Something like knight c7 is possible, and again, d5 is still hanging. So like a6... Knight c7, rook a7, rook b8, knight takes d5 is just going to be crushing. So, yeah, I mean, knight g4 seems tempting because the, the bishop on e3 is not all that stable. But, um, yeah, of course, moving your knight away from the protection of this weak isolated pawn is is not the greatest idea. Now, Stockfish for a second like this move. I mean, no normal human being would, <laughs> would play this way, but it is worth thinking about. I just sort of assumed that after bishop g5... Black has the two bishops, and white has these kind of messy pawns here. It's it's a position that certainly Stockfish could hunker down and, and try and defend, but why why even do that when this move is possible? And like I said, I think this is just completely killing, because if king h8, knight takes d8, and if rook takes d8, then, I don't know, even knight takes c, c8 here is, is enticing, just chopping off com all of the wood completely and, and maintaining an extra piece, but also just rook d1, and you're threatening to trade rooks, and you're up a piece, and you're going to take here, and possibly take here, so this is this is quite bad, and this is the tactical justification of, of the move, so he pretty much is forced to take back, and after knight takes e3, I think queen b6 is probably the most natural, and I was at least preliminarily thinking about just playing queen b3, with the idea, of course, that this is just extremely hard to to deal with. But I, I noticed that Stockfish does not find this to be all that impressive, <laughs> which is not that surprising. I mean, I, I think I can also just go b3 here and bishop f6, rook c1, and something like rook d8, queen c2, maybe bishop d7. This, is, this just seems overwhelming. Knight c4 to d6 or knight c4 to a5. This is going to be weak forever, even just like simple plans like doubling up on the d-file or or whatever are just, yeah, I mean, this, this just looks really bad. <laughs> so, but as it was, this game, yeah, ended quite quickly, <laughs> unfortunately. Okay, I think I might just record another one right after this because, you know, I, I allotted and planned on a certain amount of time and this game was really quick. So, all right, I, I hope at least I was able to give you guys a little bit of uh, understanding in the Tarish defense, optimal play for white and black, and um, I guess check out the next game. I will see you guys later. Bye.